Hey, and welcome back or welcome if you're new. In this video, I'm going to be sharing three different home decor DIYs I made using Dollar Tree supplies. My theme this year for my kitchen and dining area are bees, so if you couldn't tell, that's the theme here for these DIYs. So if you're interested in seeing how I created them, then just keep watching. For the first DIY, I'm going to be making a cute little beehive out of Dollar Tree's nautical rope and one of their plastic planter pots. I ended up using a little over three bundles of the eight foot rope with this planter pot, but depending on what size pot you use, you might use more or less. And Dollar Tree also sells the brown nautical rope in the nine and a half foot bundles as well, but it is thinner. This project is super easy to do. I just take the nautical rope and my hot glue gun and start at the bottom and work my way up, working in small sections when I apply the hot glue. And for the first couple of layers, I apply the hot glue directly on top of the rope um, of the bottom layer until I get the lip or ledge, if you will, covered, and then I apply the glue directly to the pot again. I also want to mention that this DIY is not an original idea for me. Several other craft channels have done beehive DIYs, including Dollar Tree. So I did want to put that out there because I'm a big fan of giving credit where credit is due. I'm not sure who put out the original idea, but some other crafting channels that have done beehive DIYs are Shannon from the Daily DIYer. I think Simple Made Pretty did one. And a lot of other crafting channels. It's a very popular DIY in the crafting community right now. And for good reason, because it's so ridiculously easy to make. And the bee theme is very in right now as far as spring and summer decor. So right here, I'm adding a new rope. The ends do have tape attached, and when I peeled it off, it did fringe out the ends. So I just took my lighter and ran it back and forth over the ends for a couple of seconds. And this step is optional. It was just my personal preference. If you do decide to do this step, of course, just use caution for obvious reasons. When I get to the top, I just spiral it in towards the center and I had just enough to make a small loop and hot glue it into the center. Now it's time to add the entrance to the hive. So I just took my hot glue gun and start at the bottom and draw a circle with my hot glue gun, trying to work as quickly as possible before the glue dried. My favorite part of this DIY was adding the greenery. Dollar Tree has some incredible floral and greenery picks right now. These are some of the stems I chose and I just think they just add a level of dimension and texture to this DIY as well as some country farmhouse charm. Using pieces of floral or greenery also helps cover up minor imperfections like where one rope ends and another begins. I do this all the time in my crafting projects. 
And the very last step is just darkening the entrance hole. So I'm using my Waverly black chalk paint and a pointed brush. You could probably use acrylic paint as well or like a black paint pen, whatever you have on hand. I love the chalk paint because it goes on pretty thick and I only needed one coat. And that's it for the Beehive DIY, super easy. For this next DIY, I'm going to be making a sign. So I'm using this wood sign from the 99 cents only store and I know it's not a Dollar Tree product, but Dollar Tree carries tons of decor signs that you can transform. You can use signs from other seasons that you have in your stash as well. And I'm also going to be using this farmer's market calendar from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using the image from the month of August, which is a honeybee. I start this DIY off by tearing the image out and then I use my paper cutter and cut off the left side of the image, so like all of the brown stripes with my paper cutter. And you don't need a paper cutter for this project, I just prefer to use mine because I am terrible at cutting a straight line. Next, I painted the sign with some ivory chalk paint by Waverly. Of course, you can use whatever paint you want or color you want. I chose ivory instead of white because I wanted it to match the image color as much as possible and I ended up painting two coats. I wasn't too concerned with the image or wording showing through because I'm going to be covering it up with the calendar image. After the paint dried, I lined it up how I wanted it to sit on the sign and I used some washi tape to hold it in place because I'm actually going to be cutting the paper into strips and I need to mark the lines. I used the scoring side of this Dollar Tree Pokey tool to make the score lines. You could also use a dull pencil as well. I actually would recommend a pencil over scoring the lines because when it came time to cut the strips, it was hard for me to see the score lines and I did end up cutting a couple of the strips crooked. Next, I took some matte Mod Podge and a paintbrush and began applying the strips of paper. I applied a base layer as like a glue first and then a top layer over the image paying close attention to the edges to make sure everything is secured nicely to the wood. And any air bubbles I just ran my fingers over and for the spots that overlap the grooves in the wood, I just used that scoring tool and ran it through to try to remove the paper. I would suggest waiting until the Mod Podge is completely dry and using an X-Acto knife instead because I did end up ripping it a little on the left hand side. I wanted to faux antique this up a bit, so I used three different acrylic paints in different shades of brown, and using a paper towel, I just took a little bit of each color and swirled it around on the poster board until I was happy with the shade that I created, and then I just dabbed off the excess on the paper towel before dabbing it onto the sign, and I just kind of randomly went around the sign. Um, I did the whole border of um, the sign as well as a little bit on to like the actual design or image and it just really helps it kind of make it look like one big cohesive piece instead of um, like it was just slapped on there with Mod Podge and later on I am going to cover up the border with a really nice farmhouse trim. I used two different Dollar Tree ribbons in this DIY. The farmhouse stripe ribbon is my absolute favorite. I use it a ton in other DIYs. And I'm also using this new burlap ribbon, which is charming and rustic. I'm also using more Dollar Tree greenery, like the first DIY, and I actually used greenery in all three projects. Then I take the farmhouse striped ribbon and hot glue it all the way around the sign. I wanted to add detail on the whole piece instead of just the front. I feel like it just gives it more of a finished look. And if I decide to hang it up, the bottom looks finished as well. 
Then I take the burlap ribbon and make a border on the front. This hides the edge where the paper was Mod Podge to the wood and this is going to cover up the antiquing on the edge, but I wanted to blend it as much as possible in case you were able to see through the burlap, which you can a tiny bit up close. And the final touch was adding some Dollar Tree greenery. I cut off a few pieces of these wildflower stems and hot glued them to the top. I'm a big fan of things being symmetrical. It's very satisfying to me and can sometimes be annoying, but I tried to cut off two of the same pieces and layer them at an angle so both sides looked the same. And there you have it for DIY number two. The last DIY is the easiest. I'm just going to be using this cute Dollar Tree Wi-Fi password sign and elevating it a bit by making a frame for it using Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks from the toy section. I think Dollar Tree calls these tumbling tower blocks but all I do is line them up around the frame to get an idea of how I need to place them and make sure I had enough blocks. Then I just take my hot glue gun and start gluing them in place. I would recommend gluing them one at a time instead of trying to do a whole strip at a time like I did in the beginning. It's just better to do them one at a time because hot glue does dry pretty quickly. I thought I was going to be able to pull off not having to cut one of these blocks, but I was wrong. <laughs> when I got to the end, it was a tad too long, so I just marked it with a pencil and used the Dollar Tree hacksaw to trim it down. I love this little saw for crafting. It's super convenient for light projects like this. In the bottom right corner, you can see a tiny gap in the wood, and this is where greenery comes in handy to cover up minor imperfections, like I mentioned in the first DIY. I just glued some greenery to the bottom right and top left corner to balance it out. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs. If you did, I would love a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe before you leave for more DIY and crafty inspiration. If you do recreate one of these projects, I'd love to see how it turned out. You can find and tag me on Instagram as well at cpandacrafts. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.